Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's use a little bit of game theory to see how the 2011 NFL free agency system will work in this upcoming offseason. So if you've been following the news, it looks like the NFL Players Association and the NFL will come to an agreement, uh, reaching a collective bargaining agreement, and we will get an NFL season. They just have a few kinks to work out. Um, I was reading up about this, though, and I found out a really interesting fact about the way the salary cap system is going to work and the implications that this is going to have uh, as it relates to free agency are, is just really interesting to me, and so that's what I'm going to talk about here. So what's happening right now? Well, to start, let's talk about what happened last year with the salary cap. 2010 had no salary cap. The 2010 season, you could just go out and spend as much or as little as you wanted to as an individual team. And on the little end of the spectrum, we had Tampa Bay, which only spent $63 million total, total on their team in 2010. Now, in contrast, the way the salary cap is going to work this upcoming season, if everything holds in the collective bargaining agreement, uh, 2011 is going to be a cap season, and the teams are going to be capped at $120 million, so that's the most that they can pay for their team. But they're also going to have a floor this year, so $106.8 million is the minimum amount that a team has to spend on its players. So you have to spend anywhere between $106.8 million and $120 million. What that means is that Tampa Bay is going to have to spend uh, is going to have to spend forty three point eight million dollars more this year than they did last year. And if they don't do that, if they don't go out and spend more money on players, then what happens is that the remaining money is distributed among the players on their roster. So what does that mean? What are the implications of this? Well, it's going to mean that free agents this year are going to sign ridiculously large contracts for the two thousand and eleven season. And this is going to be the case even though teams would collectively rather distribute their money among their players uh, rather than overpaying for free agents, as is going to happen. But the problem with that is they're in what we call a prisoner's dilemma in game theory. They can't credibly commit to reaching this uh, agreement where the teams distribute money fairly among the players, and what's going to end up happening is that they're going to overpay for free agents. The way we can see that this is going to happen, and this is sort of unavoidable given the circumstances, is by thinking about the different choices that two teams would have and how they might try to go about signing free agents this offseason. So let's just do a very simple two by two matrix with two teams. We have team one, team two. Each of them individually chooses whether to pay a fair amount to free agents or to overpay for free agents. And bear in mind that regardless of the amount that they pay to free agents, they're still going to have to pay $106.8 million minimum. So even if they choose this fair pay option, they don't actually save any money because they are bound to this minimum amount of $106.8 million as the salary floor. Now, given that, we need to think about what these teams' most preferred outcomes and what these teams' least preferred outcomes are. So let's start with Team 1. Team 1's ideal situation would be that they overpay for free agents and Team 2 doesn't. The reason is that they'll get all the great free agents and be a really good team, whereas Team 2 will not be that great of a team. Essentially, all the, the good players go to Team 1, all the bad players go to Team 2, so Team 1's really happy about this. We're going to represent the fact that they most like this outcome with a 4. So 4 points goes to this outcome because it's the best outcome. It's going to be the best of the 4 outcomes, so we put a 4 there. Now, what's the worst of the outcomes for Team 1? Well, obviously, if they most prefer having the good players and having Team 2 have the bad players, their least preferred outcome is to have all of the bad players on their team, Team 1, and have all the good players on Team 2. So we mark this box up here with the 1 to represent that. So this is the best outcome, this is the worst outcome. Now we just need to think about how we would uh, go about thinking about whether Team 1 would prefer this outcome or this outcome. So in this outcome, everyone gets paid a fair amount, and in this outcome, all the new free agents get overpaid a ridiculous amount. And so I think it's pretty fair to think that these, uh, this Team 1 would prefer having everyone get a fair amount rather than having to overpay for a few free agents. Even though they're spending the same amount of money in each case, at least this is uh, has some sort of justice to the, the pay system and you're not paying ridiculous contracts to just a few players, you're actually spreading the money around. Okay, now if we just do the same thing for Team 2, uh, it's the, the exact same thing, just in reverse. So here Team 2 most prefers the outcome where they overpay and get all the good players and Team 1 underpays and gets all the, the bad players, they pay a fair amount. So this is Team 2's most preferred outcome. Team 2's least preferred outcome is to uh, pay a fair amount, get all the bad players, have Team 1 overpay and get all the good players. And of course, if they were to pay the same amounts, if both teams were to pay a fair amount, they would prefer that Team 2 would prefer this outcome over to both teams overpaying. Now, the way we solve this game is just by looking to see what each team should do in response to the other one. 
So let's start by supposing that team one knew team two would pay a fair amount. How should team one respond to that? Well, it's quite clear by what we see on the screen here that they should overpay just because this overpay outcome is a four and this fair pay outcome is a three, so they prefer this outcome. They should overpay if team two pays a fair amount. And likewise, if team two is overpaying, then team one's best response is to overpay as well. They prefer overpaying here because this two is greater than this one. This outcome is essentially better than this outcome. So regardless of what team two does, team one should overpay. And what we're actually gonna see is the same is true for team two. So imagine team two knew that team one would pay a fair amount. How should team two respond? Well, here they overpay, they get four. Here they pay a fair amount, get three. This four is better than this three. So team two should respond to team one paying a fair amount by overpaying. And likewise, if team one were to overpay, team two should respond to that by overpaying. This two is greater than this one. Team two gets a better outcome if they overpay in response to team one overpaying than team two would get if they paid a fair amount. So the result of this game is that both teams overpay and you end up in this outcome. But what makes this so interesting and fascinating is that both teams would actually prefer to end up in this outcome. These threes represent the fact that these teams both prefer this outcome to this outcome. The problem is though, we can't get to this outcome where we both pay a fair amount because it's inherently unstable. So if team one were to say, hey, team two, we should just both pay a fair amount and get this outcome instead of this outcome because it's better for both of us. If team two were to do that, team one would essentially just backstab on them, overpay in advance to this, this better outcome for team one. And likewise, team two would want to do the same thing. If team two knew that team one would try to do this fair play thing, team two would respond by backstabbing as well. And so you end up in this outcome where both of these teams overpay for free agents. And it's kind of silly, but there you go. My real question though is why is that the case? Does the NFL and the NFL Players Association not understand the dynamic that's going on here? The team, or excuse me, the deal only benefits or seems to benefit from what I understand and from what I see of here that it's only the, the current free agents who get overpaid, so they're the only ones who get any benefits from this. In, the, in contrast, non-free agents, those teams or those players that are currently signed to teams lose out on revenue share here, which is pretty silly. Uh, for those guys and of course the owners end up in a silly outcome because they overpay for players so it just seems fairly strange and you have to wonder why that uh, the free agency system is going to work in this particular manner this year and why they decided to come up with those salary cap considerations but you know whatever that's what they're doing um, but that is something to look out for in the upcoming month whenever the collective bargaining agreement is signed to see how this free agency plays out my prediction of course is that it's going to look fairly foolish